Welcome back to another Art of War Streamhouse RTT. I am Richard Siegler, and I come back to you today as the Supreme Commander of the Tau Empire. Yes, I am in fact submitting a Tau list to this RTT. I know, I know, they have a very low win rate. They're maligned as one of the worst factions in 9th edition. However, let me break down the list first, and then we can talk about why I actually think this is genuinely strong and powerful. So, let's start out with the Farsight Enclave's Patrol. We have an XV-8 Commander, two Flamers, ATS Drone Controller, give that sweet plus one to hit to my drones. Warlord, through Unity Devastation, extra AP on sixes to wound. Nice bonus for some of the mid-AP um, you know, weapons that I have in this list. And then two Marker Drones. 10 Breachers with the Pistols, the Guardian Drone, and Marker Drone in the first unit, and then 10 more Breachers with Pistols and two Marker Drones. Then the XV-109 Riptide with Ion Accelerator, two Fusion Blasters, Velocity Tracker, Counter Defense System, two Shielded Missile Drones, and then the Prototype System, the Amplified Ion Accelerator for that flat 3 plus D3 damage, really reliable, flat 6 shots, don't need to Nova Boost it, so you can do other cool tricks, which I'll talk about in just a minute. Eight Crisis Bodyguards, all with Air Burst and ATS, so sweet indirect fire coming out of this list, and anti-infantry power. Followed by the prototype system, Reactive Countermeasures, to ignore AP 1 and 2 in shooting, making this a very durable unit to stand out on objectives when you limit your opponent's ability to react with high AP fire. Then there's Veteran Cadre, spent on them pregame as well, for plus one to hit um, in, well, plus one ballistic skill and plus one weapon skill. So making them as efficient as possible. Don't need to use as many strats on them if you don't want to. And then finally, two marker drones. Then five pathfinders with a recon drone and the grab drone, one of my favorite drones in existence. Then two DX6 Remora stealth drones, which are a forge world unit, also have some tricks. Two TY7 double fish with double gun drones. And then finally, a Viola Sept patrol with Anshi, 10 breachers, and more breachers, all with pulse pistols, two three-man stealth suit units, and then finally one more devilfish to round out the list. So what is going on here? Let's start with the Viorla detachment because it's a little different. The Viorla Sept rule allows them to advance and shoot assault weapons without penalty, which is nice to have on breachers, which have an assault two weapon. So you can go ahead and disembark them, move your six inches, and then finally advance as well. And then they are a 15 inch range gun. However, that close range profile at uh, five inches is strength six AP2, that's the one you really want. But there's a one CP strat to extend the range of that to 15 inches. So with the advance, no penalty, you don't really need marker lights as much, though they're of course nice to have to ignore cover and plus one to hit. But you can still do quite a bit of damage from range with these breachers advancing out of Devilfish. The other thing is the Viorla stratagem is two CP at the start of the shooting phase for an infantry unit, you get to shoot twice. So, 10 Breachers, they put out 20 shots. If you're extending the range on their Breacher weapons, Strength 6, AP 2, 1 damage, not a bad number. But if you're shooting twice, that's 40 shots now. And uh, if your opponent's benefiting from cover, there's another 1 CP strat to uh, reroll wounds, one of the most powerful abilities in 9th edition, just that extra efficiency on your shooting. If there's 5 Marker Lights on the target, you've got plus 1 to hit, so hitting on 3s, rerolling 1s, they can be very, very efficient. But also, there's a 1 CP strat, which I like using on these Breachers, which turns their weapons into pistols. So the Breacher Gun, the blast, Pulse Blaster becomes Strength 6, AP 2, 1 damage, Pistol 2. And then they come with those free Pulse Pistols, which are Strength 5, no AP, 1 damage. So you put out 20 of those shots, and then 10 of the Pulse Pistols, but now you're spending 2 CP to double the number of shots. That's 40 Pulse Blaster shots, Pistol 2, and then you also have 20 more Pulse Pistol shots. That's a lot of firepower coming out of a single 90-point unit. So I'm using these for damage on the flanks, being able to push the double fish up aggressively on either side, and then go ahead and pop out these Viorla Breachers to do a, a hellacial amount of damage. That's really what I'm aiming for. So 90-point unit that can put out a ton of damage with some command points. I'm all about it. In addition, they, I have these stealth suits for board control and mission playing, especially those two missions where you want, if you uh, control the objective at the end of your command phase, you then control it until your opponent takes it away. There's two missions like that. Stealth suits help Tal on the mission tremendously here. They're also another thing you can throw onto objectives with a Devilfish or with some Breachers and some two-man drone units to make it so your opponent can't split fire efficiently against any of that. So they, if they overcommit, they kill only one or two units. If they undercommit, then they might not end up killing any of those. So something to help force your opponent to split fire inefficiently, which 
is what the old 8th edition Tau list was all about for Tides and Drones. Um, and then finally on Shi, he spends the command point for Academy Luminary, so a 9-inch aura of that sweet Leadership 9, as that really helps the drones. And then he has a plus 1 command point from that. So basically that Warlord trait's free. Nice to have. On Shi is going to give up the 6 of you know, Pain to my units, all those infantry and battle suits. And then maybe the reroll advances when I might need it, um, but probably almost always the 6 of you know, Pain. So that's what that detachment is there for. Then the Farsight Enclaves. Farsight Enclaves got some really powerful rules in the For the Greater Good Psychic Awakening. I am using many of them here. So what is being used? Well, their breachers, the Farsight Enclave ones, have a 1 CP strat to reroll wounds within an enemy unit within 12. So another way to get reroll wounds, super powerful into Death Guard and Dark Angels as well, but really anything that's trying to be durable, even a vehicle spam type of list, that stratagem is great value for the breachers. Then we have uh, the Riptide himself. He, as you can notice, there's not a lot of drones in this army, so I'm not really relying on uh, Savior Protocols. Instead, because he has the Amplified Iron Accelerator, he does not need to Nova boost his weapon, and so can sit on, sit on that sweet 3-up invuln for most of the game. But if you don't want to sit on the 3-up invuln, or if you want to spend Nova Boost uh, or the, the Stratagem to pick two effects, so you can pick the three up invuln. The other one I like picking is the move 2d6 in the charge phase. So you go ahead, move the Riptide out there in your movement phase, shoot away at an enemy unit, and then 2d6 move right back into the Ruin, add a line of sight, can't be targeted anymore by uh, anything but indirect fire, and then um, you can very easily uh, pick away your opponent's resources over those first couple, th you know, two, three turns or so. And by that point, late game, you can go back to the three up invuln and just walk out onto objectives and hold them down. So really like that utility. It means you can really save a lot of points on drones that don't need to follow this riptide around. Instead, just use terrain to your advantage. Then I have the eight crisis bodyguard. Why are they amazing? Well, they are a blast weapon. So it's normally D6 shots, strength four, AP one with ATS, one damage. Doesn't sound that impressive, but all of a sudden you start adding, you're shooting at a six man unit. Well, minimum D3 shots on each of those. Then you're shooting at an 11 plus unit of Pox Walkers or Necron Warriors, 12 shots per guy, because it's flat six per, per gun. That adds up really quickly. And of course, they have the one CP strat from the Codex, command and control node, the commander gives up his shooting and allows them to reroll wounds. So now they're putting out a ton of shots. They're hitting on threes or rerolling ones. You could make them hit on twos with marker lights or with the stratagem uh, for crisis suits. And then they're also rerolling to wound. So Mass efficiency on this firepower here. I also ignore AP 1 and 2 uh, in shooting, and so late game, they're very, very uh, powerful for standing on objectives, and your opponent usually doesn't have the resources to deal with them. And even if they have a couple high AP weapons, they kill one or two crisis suits, doesn't matter. You still help hold down those objectives. They're also the best counter assault unit that Tau has access to with that 1 CP Farsight Enclave strat. Three ups do mortal wounds for every one of your models that ends in engagement range. So. If the eight crisis bodyguards land into some Dark Angel Terminators or some Death Guard um, Death Shrouds, you can, on three ups, do a bunch of mortal wounds to them. Really, really nice uh, for finishing off some of these high durability units that really want to benefit from minus one damage or transhuman. They also, if they're near the commander, have a one CP reroll all their hit and wound rolls in combat. So extra efficiency there. This unit is amazing against armies that want to trap you and stop you from falling back. So like all this new Jukari stuff that we're seeing with the Shard Nets. I uh, don't want any of that. The Crisis Bodyguards really help me tremendously there. Also a beast of a unit on Overwatch. Anything within six that has for the greater good, I'm going to be overwatching in support with the Crisis Bodyguard if I really want to kill it. So very, very powerful unit that makes your opponent think twice about charging you. How do you protect this big unit? Got some Devilfish, got some Breachers that could do it. The Riptide could potentially stand in front uh, behind a Ruin. But I bring these two stealth Remora drones because they are airborne, and so only units with a fly keyword can charge them. A lot of the melee units we're seeing right now do not have the fly keyword outside of specialist armies like Blood Angels. So by and large, armies like Jukari got Incubi and Witches flying around. They can't charge these Remora stealth drones. And then behind them, if they want to make a longer charge around the outside of these stealth drones and then charge whatever's behind, like the Crisis Suits, I can tuck that grab drone in there and subtract D3 from every charge within 12 inches of it. So it makes those really long charges even longer or impossible. Um, certainly risky to try and do. So there's a nice safety net here built into defending the Crisis Bodyguard unit. 
The Remora drones also have some offense. They've got some missiles on there, some long barrel burst cannons, and they're drones, so they can benefit from that uh, drone co controller for plus one to hit. But they also benefit from the Farsight Enclave stratagem. One CP, a flyer unit, um, every unit within three inches on a four up takes D3 mortals. And you can spend an additional CP to benefit another flyer. So both Remora stealth drones, two CP, every unit within three of them is taking mortals on uh, four up, uh, D3 mortals on that four up. So. It's a nice way also if there's other things that are being, if I'm being trapped uh, on other parts of the board, don't have um, enough ways to either counter assault with the crisis bodyguard or there's multiple breacher units trapped and I can only spend the pistol strat in one of those places, I can then send the remora stealth drones into the other place and do mortals there. But once again, also powerful into all these elite armies that we're seeing that don't like mortal wounds whatsoever. So really like the remora stealth drones. And I think they're going to be an excellent tool for screening my army. They're also a 30-inch uh, move, so it can get me engage points if I need to. Or I can bring them out of airborne, move them 15 inches, and make charge moves and just tie things up. Because they count as in cover against ranged attacks, and they're minus one to hit uh, if they have airborne. So they can actually have quite a bit of defense uh, if I want them to. So overall, I actually think this tile list is legitimately powerful. It has a lot of great tools. Um, it has a lot of firepower spread out all over the place. Each unit with some command points can do a lot of damage very quickly, and I can overwhelm my opponent. This, this army is also very good at controlling the middle of the board. Anything that goes in there is gonna be in the Crisis Bodyguard airburst range, and if you are an infantry unit or don't have incredibly high toughness um, or abilities to um, you know, ignore AP and stuff like that, if you don't have those, you are going to get picked up. So 30 horrors, 20 poxwalkers, whatever it is, I am clearing up all that obsec that my opponent has in the middle of the board, and then I'm going to able I'm able to deal with the rest of their army with things like the Riptide and with the Breachers walking up the flanks. I also typically am going to spend one CP to reserve a Breacher team from the far side enclaves and one from the Viorla Sept, and have them come in and force my opponent to screen, bring resources closer to me so the Airburst can do more things each turn. So overall, I think this list is genuinely powerful. This is not a troll list. I think I can win a lot of games with this, and I certainly have Nick sweating, uh, thinking he has to play Tau. So, hope that ends up happening, and um, thank you so much for listening to this video. Let me know what you think of the list in the comments below. I hope you enjoy the games that I get to play with it. Hopefully it's more than one. Hello everyone, Art of War is running a super awesome raffle giveaway contest to coincide with our Streamhouse RTT. In this contest, we're giving away tons of free stuff and same with all of our sponsors. Mr. Siegs, what can these people win? Over $3,000 worth of prizes. You have an Army Painter Mega Paint set, you've got Indominus boxes, Table War mats, you've got exclusive coaching calls with Nick and myself, John Lennon or Brad Chester, you've also got 3D6 objective mats that we use on stream, and an entire Big Bear 3D terrain set that we use on stream god. exclusive oh my god and access to the war room and so much more so how does it work all you have to do is follow the link right below on this page and you get access to all of our social media links and all our facebook's our it's our sponsors facebook's instagram's twitter's all that click jazz. like click subscribe follow whatever it is whatever platform for us art of war and all of our sponsors and you will get entries into this giveaway we're using new state-of-the-art technology state of the art all you have to do is like follow share subscribe you get entries for doing each and every single one it's free all you have to do is interact with us and our sponsors on social media you get entered into this raffle giveaway and all of a sudden the terrain sec is going to show up on your doorstep maybe Come back every day for bonus entries as well. Mm -hmm. So follow us on YouTube. We're doing daily list review videos leading up to the RTT. Then the RTC itself is going to take place starting Tuesday, April 6th and ending Sunday, April 18th. Throughout that whole two-week period, there's going to be more and more chances to get raffle tickets and win free stuff. And then we're going to be, do a big giveaway at the end of it. All those big ticket items, tune in for the final. We are going to be giving them away. So what are you waiting for? Like the stuff, follow the things, and get free stuff. Watch me win the RTT. No, no, no.